Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to see everyone. Um, we'll, I want to start with a few announcements today. Um, the first is a sad one um, that our founding pastor, Reverend Stuart McCall, died this week. And um, he was 95 and he uh, was with his family in Houston. And the we will be able to celebrate his life here. There will be a service that the, the family is planning, um, work out the scheduling, but we'll have his memorial service and his interment. We'll have his ashes be with the Reverend Jane McCall, his wife, in the memorial garden. So praying for his family this week and giving thanks for his life. Um, wanted to thank all who were at the uh, peace vigil at the temple last Sunday night. We had um, 19 people from WPC, including seven of our teenagers, um, come to the um, temple B'nai Chaim. And the, the cantor and all of our Jewish brothers and sisters were so grateful for the presence of this congregation and about 300 in total who were there. And Rise Against Hunger, what an enormous success uh, yesterday. I wasn't here myself, but Andrew and the children were here and wanted to um, send a huge thank you to the Cummins family, Tara, Tim, and Maggie, for producing this event. Um, so much fun. And the, Berta sent me the numbers last night. We packed, we as an entire community of Wilton, packed 137,000 meals and yes, amen. <laughs> um, by 700 people were here um, at the complex yesterday, including all of our confirmation students, all of our eighth graders, and all of their mentors. Unbelievable. So um, thank you all. Um, next Sunday, we'll be having what we're calling a Tell Me More session right after the service. So if you're interested in becoming a member or you know someone who might be, um, stop by at 11.15 next week, uh, right after church, and the children will be with Julie for a Halloween party, so definitely child care as well. Um, and let's see, on November 5th, we'll be having a Moses discussion group. Today is the first Sunday out of three. We're having a three-week Moses sermon series, and November 5th, we will have a discussion group led by our very own Andrew Jones um, after church, after worship. All right, let us worship God together. Good morning. Our call to worship this morning is adapted from Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make his deeds known to all the people. For our God is faithful. Sing his praises, tell of his wonderful works, and glory in his holy name. Let those who seek the Lord rejoice. For our God is faithful. Search for God and for God's strength. Never stop looking for him. For our God is faithful. Let us pray. God, you have spoken to men and women of old through dreams, visions, and miraculous experiences. Yet we confess that we seek to rely on tradition, habit, reason alone. Fill us with vision, lead us into the future, enable us to grow toward a deeper understanding of your nature, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Friends, this is the good news of the gospel, and it is for you, and it is for all. Whatever we have done, whatever we have failed to do, whoever we are, whoever we wish we were, but are not, we are accepted. We are welcomed, we are forgiven, we are set free. In the love of Jesus Christ, we are loved forever. Amen. Let us extend a sign of peace to one another. Our first scripture this morning is from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. 
call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. This ends the scripture reading. Our second scripture reading is found in Exodus, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. And that's on page 47 of your pew Bible, if you'd like to follow along. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, today is the first of a series of three sermons on Moses. And our reading today comes from near the beginning of the Moses narrative. So in the first three chapters of Exodus, just to bring you up to speed before we get to the scripture for today, we learn that the Egyptians are oppressing the Israelites into slave labor. Moses is born in Egypt as an Israelite baby, but is raised as a child by Pharaoh's daughter. <clears throat> one day when he's grown, Moses sees one of his people being beaten by an Egyptian, and Moses kills the Egyptian. Moses then runs away to a foreign land to hide from Pharaoh, becoming a shepherd and starting a family. As Moses is tending his sheep, God appears to him in a burning bush and tells Moses he has chosen him to set the Israelites free. So this brings us to Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Then Moses answered, but suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say, the Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a staff. And God said, throw it on the ground. So he threw the staff on the ground and it became a snake. And Moses drew back, drew back from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and seize it by the tail. So he reached out his hand and grasped it, and it became a staff in his hand, so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Again, the Lord said to him, put your hand inside your cloak. He put his hand into his cloak. And when he took it out, his hand was leprous, as white as snow. Then God said, put your hand back into your cloak. So he put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his body. If they will not believe you or heed your first sign, they may believe the second sign. If they will not believe even these two signs or heed you, you shall take some water from the Nile, and pour it on dry ground. And the water you shall take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. But Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor even now that you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And then the Lord said to him, Who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf? seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. But he said, Oh, my Lord, please send someone else. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Oh, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. I'd like to begin by telling you a story. This week, I spoke with a friend whom I will call Samantha. Samantha shared with me her deep frustration about what it was like for her to fail her board certification exam. She explained the range of emotion she felt when she got this news. Shock, then disbelief, then outrage, shame, 
and finally sadness as the reality soaked in. First, she called the board of examiners, thinking there must be a mistake. Then she talked at length with her mentor, who had spent six months helping her study, trying to sort out what had gone wrong. And then she signed up to appeal the failing result. By the time Samantha talked to me this week, which was about two months after she got her results, she was in a very different place. When I asked her how she was doing, she told me she was surrendering so that she could move on. She'd started a yoga class and she was trying to let go of her negative emotions. She's still planning to appeal the exam result, but she hopes that in releasing her anger, she'll be in a better place to receive what happens, whatever happens in the future. There's a difference between surrendering and giving up. When we give up, we abandon or forget in order to move on. But when we surrender, we move on by opening up. We open ourselves to the power of something or someone, emptying ourselves so that we're ready to receive. And this is what Moses shows us today. Like my friend Samantha, Moses is very reluctant to give up control. He clenches his shepherd's staff, his rod, very tightly in his hand when he first encounters God. And he has a lot of good reasons not to trust. Can't you send someone else, Moses begs, someone who can speak well, who has self-confidence, someone who's not a murderer? But God doesn't choose someone else to lead his people. Despite his issues, or perhaps because of his issues, God wants Moses. In a few minutes, the choir will sing Moses' words to God. Don't you know I don't talk so good? God's response? Exodus 4, 11. Who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. Moses surrenders what little power his speech gives him and makes room for God's power to live in his words. Then, in a symbolic gesture, God asks Moses to surrender his rod, the tool that defines him as a shepherd. God says to him, throw it on the ground. And when Moses finally does, his rod becomes a hissing snake. And God asks Moses to surrender even his open hand to pick up that snake. We know Moses has finally surrendered and accepted God's mission because the next time he picks up his staff, it's God's staff, not Moses's. Exodus 4.20, so a couple paragraphs after we finished, the text says, So Moses went back to the land of Egypt, and Moses carried the staff of God in his hand. And with the staff of God in his hand, Moses is changed and empowered to do great things. The inspiration for this sermon comes from Ken Metema, who is a singer-songwriter who tells the story of Moses' surrender to God in this incredible anthem you are about to hear the chancel choir sing. But before they do, I want to tell you a little something about the life of Ken Metema because it illustrates his own beautiful message. And I want to make sure you have, there's a leaflet inside your bulletin, um, and that has the, the lyrics to the anthem that you're about to hear. So you can follow along if you'd like, or you can just listen. So from the time this singer-songwriter was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan in 1943, he was visually impaired. And Metema describes his sight as, and these are his own words, quote, limited to distinguishing between light and darkness and seeing fuzzy outlines of large objects, unquote. He started playing the piano at five years old, and was taught the classics with braille music, and then he learned to play by ear. 
And he went on to have a successful career as a performing and recording artist and has recorded more than 40 albums and is still traveling and performing today. Could there be a better example of surrendering fear and opening one's hand to the future that God will reveal? Unbelievable. What do you hold in your hand today? Is it anger or shame like my friend Samantha? Is it pride? Is it perfection? Fear? Sadness? Spite? Or is it something else? What do you hold in your hand? Listen now for the word of God to you from the chancel choir.
Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, give you thanks. We give you thanks for the gift of life, for the gift of your Son, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. God, lead us through the trials. Lead us through the suffering and sorrow, the challenges and the struggles, the tired times and the dark places. God, be with those who weep. Be with those who cannot sleep. Be with those who have no peace, who seek release. God, lead us. Lead us with grace, with love, with peace. Fill us with hope, with patience, with stamina. Transform us in your image in your Son, in your name. Transform us, God, to grow, to understand, to see. Transform us, God, that we made whole and in wholeness may we be the hands and the heart of Christ we lift up in prayer god all those whose names are known to you and to us in the silence of our hearts God, we offer all these prayers to you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we Forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the words of Ken Medema, what do you hold in your hand today? To what or to whom are you bound? Are you willing to give it up to God right now? Give it up, let it go, throw it down. <laughs>